Okay, let's talk about the CBEST exam. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for the CBEST, which is an exam uh, uh, many of you out there in the state of California have to take to become educators in uh, the school system. So obviously there's different roles. Um, uh, there's you know high school teachers, middle school teachers, paraprofessionals, teacher aides, librarians, etc. So uh, there's a wide range of roles that make a school function. Uh, some people have to take different exams like the C set. Others have to take the C best. So I'm assuming that you have to take the C best exam uh, to get uh, the position that you want to get. And what we're going to be doing in this video is be taking a look at a math problem that you should be able to handle pretty well. Um, if you're fully prepared for the math that's you know you're going to be encountering on the CBAS. So we're going to get to that in a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last several years, I've constructed many online math courses to include a CBAS math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. Um, all my courses are really, really comprehensive. I had a lot of people uh, successfully use this CBEST uh, test prep course, uh, math test prep course. So you can check that out later if you like. But let's go ahead and get to this practice problem. Now, again, I was saying that this problem should be pretty easy uh, for those of you who are fully prepared to handle the math that's going to be on the CBEST. So a good characterization of the math that you're going to see would be high school level mathematics. I think that's good description, uh, a lot of algebra and geometry. You're not going to need to know super advanced, you know, uh, trigonometry and calculus, and you're not going to need to know that. But you're definitely going to have to be uh, strong in high school level, basic algebra, geometry, amongst other topics as well, okay? So it's not just real basic, basic math, you know, like fractions and decimals, you, and that's important, um, obviously, but you're going to have to know uh, you know, again, algebra, geometry, etc. So let's get to this problem. And uh, let me go and actually tell you the problem. So obviously we have some algebra stuff here, some expression. What I'd like you to do is to factor, I'd like you to factor this expression. Now, the way I like to do these little problems is, one, uh, for those of you who can do the problem, you should pause the video and go ahead and do it real quick. Obviously, I'm going to solve it here in a second. But for those of you who are not quite sure what to do, I'm going to give you a hint. Okay. And then uh, you should go ahead and try the problem. Uh, so if you don't want to hear the hint, go ahead and pause the video. All right. So what is the hint? Well, first of all, we have to know what factoring means. Okay. So factoring means what? Well, this is where we talk about things like the greatest common factor. So let's use a more basic example. Let's say I had 8x plus 10, okay? And I said factor this expression here. Well, what are the greatest, what's the greatest common factors is, is the first thing you should be thinking about when you're being told to factor something, okay? So here I'm thinking, okay, 8x, this 8 is the same thing as 2 times 4, that's x, that's the same thing as x, and then 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. So the common factor is 2, and that is the greatest common factor. I can factor out a 2, okay? So I can write this expression as 2 times 4x plus 5, okay? Because when I use the distributor property, okay, and I, put, I took this factor, right? Remember the word factor... If I told you to factor 20, that's like making a factor tree. That's like 2 times 10. 2 and 10 are factors of 20, meaning that these um, uh, are pro these numbers, when you multiply them, get back to this number. So we need to understand these definitions. But factoring in algebra is extremely important because it's a skill that you need to have in order to do a lot of other um, algebra problems. So this is an illustration of factoring using the greatest common factor, and you'll be doing, uh, that's what you're going to need in this particular problem, but there are a lot of other factoring techniques you're going to have to be familiar with uh, to be ready for uh, the math on the CBEST, but let's just focus on this basic problem right here. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and solve that. So here we can see um, I have 20 and I have 40. So clearly this factors, this is 20 is the same thing as 20 times 1 and 40 is the same thing as 20 times 2. So the greatest common factor, okay, is 20. So I can factor out a 20 from this expression, okay? So let's put the, this over here. But I can also factor out an x, okay? Because I have x times x, and this is an x. So they have a common factor of 1x. So I can factor out a 20x right here. So now when you, when you uh, factor out your greatest common factor, just ask yourself, 20x times what is going to get me back to 20x squared? Well, that's going to be x. Okay, 20x times x gets me back to 20x squared. And then 20x times what is going to get me back to 40x? Well, hopefully you uh, uh, wrote down 2. Okay, so 20x times x plus 2 is how you factor this particular expression. Now, uh, for many of you out there, if you were um, lost on this, then... Don't panic because a lot of people struggle with factoring, but it's something that you're definitely going to have to, you know, uh, relearn and, you know, uh, be ready for. Okay. Now, for those of you that uh, did well with this problem without any hints, that's uh, very good. But again, I would classify this as a basic level kind of factoring problem. There's certainly much more advanced uh, problems and factoring in um, algebra is critical and in mathematics you've got to know how to factor it's a huge skill um, so anyways use this um, video this problem as feedback and you know get ready to take this uh, test I mean the thing with the CBEST is this um, you know you can't you can't get into the position that you want until you pass this certification exam so it's only going to make you a better educator by you know, immersing yourself uh, in the mathematics. And I would just say, when you're learning math, there really are no shortcuts. You're looking for, you know, hey, uh, learn you know, high school algebra in five days or less. That's just, you know, that's just a ploy. <laughs> the only way you're gonna learn math is really getting in with a, uh, a good program, something you understand, try to find a teacher, and, and just build your skill sets up one by one, okay? And if you've been away from school, for several years don't panic because uh, you may not know this but if sometimes it's better that you have been away from school in other words let's say you're 30 40 years old now you want to go back and become an educator um, and, and you and your memories of being a high school student might be like oh I was terrible I flunked out of math da, 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 da. if that's your memories don't worry about that you are a completely different person you are you know serious you're you're motivated and you're more focused, okay? You cannot judge yourself on your math abilities. I see this over and over again, and I can tell you 99.9% .9 of the people who failed out of math or maybe even didn't finish their uh, high school diploma later on in life are like outstanding, uh, you know, math students, okay? So don't judge yourself on who that, you know, your your track record, you know, uh, a long time ago. You can learn all this stuff uh, from the beginning, okay? Relearn it, and you're going to learn it a lot better. Uh, but again, you're going to have to give yourself time, and you're going to have to stay committed uh, uh, to and, and be consistent um, learning math. You just can't learn math a little bit here, a little bit there, one topic here, one topic there. You're not going to really, you know, uh, form the strong foundation that you're going to need uh, for the CBEST. All right, so with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my CBEST math prep course in the description of this video. I think you'll be really impressed uh, with it. So all my courses have taken me uh, several years uh, to make. So if you want to check that out, the link will be there. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, um, I've been on YouTube for several years at the time of this video. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out. So uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing as I'm posting new stuff all the time. If you like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. What's your situation? Are you, um, 
you know, going from college into the classroom? Are you switching careers? You know, what position are you going for? You know, you know, why are you interested in, you know, going into the classroom? I will say this much. For those of you who are going to be new uh, to teaching, um, uh, it's going to be challenging. Teaching is just challenging, okay? But it's also very rewarding. So, um, you know, part of being a, an, edu an educator, obviously, is getting through these certification exams. Then the other part is just learning the job OJT and being around veteran teachers that are going to really teach you what you have to know. I would say this much. Um, uh, don't quit. Okay, especially in the early years, because those are you know they're going to be more challenging years. Wait until you get some experience until you can really judge uh, the career, uh, because there is a um, there's a lot of folks that go through get their certification exams and they think they have one set of expectations. They get to the classroom and then they're disappointed in the way things uh, turn out. Um, it takes time to get some experience as a teacher, but what I've found in my own personal career is that the more experience uh, you have, the more you enjoy. The job, but it definitely takes time. But step number one is to get your certification and get through tests like the CBEST. Okay, so I definitely wish you all the best on the CBEST and all your educational uh, goals. Thank you for your time and have a great day.